one of the greatest challenges that any performer faces is to stay fresh and relevant, especially once you have an established track record. The Jubangi Dance Theatre has managed to crack the secret and I wanted to find out how. Jibangi Dance Theatre, whose repertoire includes African, Indian, contemporary and Afrofusion, believes in forever pushing the boundaries. Their uniqueness lies in their boldness to constantly take risks when creating dance work that is meaningful and significant in an ever-changing environment. The group has toured extensively, both locally and internationally, performing in India, Canada, the United Kingdom, Germany, Sri Lanka, Malaysia and Ireland, and their global journey has only just begun. Once we've passed our teenagers, do any of us want to get older? This is the 26th year that the Tribangi Dance Theatre has been wowing audiences, which makes them a veteran in the performing arts world. Somehow, they've managed to maintain their youthful energy, and I want to know how they've done it. Let's see if the director, Jace Bri Mupin, and her dancers can shed some light on the matter. Jace Bri is an accomplished Bharatanatyam dancer, teacher, and choreographer. Sensitivity to other styles of dance and collaborations are her strengths. And her goal is to reinvent Bharatanatyam in a South African context. Jay! Hi! Hi, hi, hi! <laughs> so good to see you. Congratulations! Shubanki Dance Theatre has existed for 26 years. Did you ever think you'd reach this milestone? I think when one starts something, you know, when you start an entity and an organisation, you actually you don't really know where it's going to go or the shape it's going to take and the form that it's going to take. But I'm just so grateful that we actually managed to get to this point. What were the original aims of Tribangi? Original aims were always to present work that is intelligible in content, unique in its presentation. And of course it had its challenges when you're doing your experimentation. Some artists like myself want to step out of boundaries. You want to be respectful to the art form, but you want to step out of boundaries and you want to experiment. And how has Tribangi developed over the years? It's taken a life and shape of its own and the company just evolved and the dance school evolved with the times because when you work in a broader dance community, you have to keep up. These are talking feet, talking drums and talking souls, said one critic, going on to say, beautiful South African bodies steeped in different cultural heritage where rhythms converge. What have been some of your company highlights so far? I think travelling, we've travelled quite a bit and we were invited to perform, you know, overseas. It, it made me realise that there's people that actually want to see our work. To see how your work is received in all these other countries always makes it so much more enjoyable and fulfilling. Another critic added, it's not quite African, not quite Indian. It's intriguingly bicultural. It's more than communication between diverging energies in the formal sense. Although some dancers have come and gone, one member has stood the test of time. And Lance Lazwane initially established his reputation as an Afrofusion dance exponent. That's before Bharatanatyam caught his attention. Now he's been with Shubangi for over a decade. Thank you so much. And Santa, what drew you to dance and how old were you at the time? I started at an early age, but I was not sure if I was going to be a dancer. It's something that I just used to like going to Mobani train station to bask on weekends for some few cents. But uh, as I grew older, moved to Alexandra, I realized that it's something that I could make a career. What got you interested in classical Indian dance? Um, staying in Alexandra actually drew me closer to Tribangi Dance Theatre. I didn't know where to study because I loved the technique, but I didn't know where to go. At the time I was working at Soweto Dance Theatre and my, my teacher, uh, David April, recommended me to Auntie Jay, who's the artistic director of Tribangi, and I was invited for auditions. 
and I made it. You were also invited to Delhi to perform solo. Tell us about it. It was a challenge for me. I was uh, invited by the ICCR to come and work uh, at this festival, which was the International Dance Festival in New Delhi. And what did you gain from that experience? The experience was amazing because we had a chance to interact with uh, fellow dancers and dance gurus. We attended workshops and with musicians. So the experience was great because they helped us to hone our skills also to listen to the music because how Indian dancers taught here in India is two different things. It's amazing. Well, I hear you've got another dance first. Yes, uh, I will be showing you Shiva's anklets, my favorite. Lord Shiva, Lord of the Universe. Let's go. Whilst he is a devout Christian, Nklandla says he has a deep respect for all cultures, religions and philosophies. This is evident in his representation of Shiva's role as a creator, preserver and destroyer of the universe, conveying the concept of the never-ending cycle of time. Nklandla, what does dance mean to you on a personal level? It is my soulmate, my passion and uh, it is very, very spiritual. Tribangi derives from Tribanga, meaning three bends in the body, the neck, waist and knee. The dancers at Tribangi celebrate this concept literally, which can be seen with their enthusiasm and energy. Okay, you have got to teach me some of that, please. No problem. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four. Most of these dancers come from a background of extreme poverty to become part of a team that brings together the grace of Bharatanatyam with the strong physicality of African dance. This is indeed unity through diversity. 